carolinaprepper.com. If you're looking for quality food storage for hiking, fishing, hunting, basic survival needs, or just for everyday use, check out our food storage line at carolinaprepper.com. We also carry other fine quality products such as our can-can concealment holsters for men and women. Keeping your firearm under cover and within reach puts confidence in your hands in any situation. Our products are 100% American made. Check us out today at carolinaprepper.com. Knowles on the news. Susan Knowles. I hope everybody had a great 4th of July celebration, great Independence Day celebration. I know that my family did. It was uh, over too quickly and a lot of fireworks, of course, but it was uh, it was great, great celebration. So glad that uh, we were able to have that celebration. So glad that we live in a country where we have a president who uh, loves America. It was just it was just great to all of that again, you know, to be a part of that and to see that. And I hope you had a great celebration as well. I, I know that uh, we've had some difficulties uh, over the 4th of July weekend. You, you know, you would think that the news would kind of simmer down, as they say, and we wouldn't have all that uh, we've had going on. But that wasn't the case. Uh, we had CNN. You, know, you wouldn't expect it to be CNN. But we had CNN who just couldn't contain themselves. CNN who decided that they were going to be the, I don't know, what's the best way to say it, the schoolyard bully, uh, the, the mainstream media bully. I mean, what, what better way to describe CNN than, than in that way? This time, uh, I think they went too far. And I think, I don't know, will, are, will they ever admit to going too far? I mean, do they <laughs> ever think of anything that they do in mainstream media is too far? I mean, they can tell us what we should and shouldn't do, but as for themselves, they have a, a different standard, different set of rules that they live by. Uh, but this time, they didn't like the meme. You know <laughs> the meme that I'm talking about, and for you on YouTube here, I can I can show you the exact um Making about that CNN didn't like. This is the one with Donald Trump where he's taking down the guy onto the floor with a CNN face, not real, not a real person. I know that you know that, and most sane people know that. But uh, takes him down to the floor, and of course CNN doesn't like that at all. Uh, no, as a matter of fact, the, they they went kind of cuckoo, if you will and decided that they were going to go out and do what the American public wanted them to do, and that they, they were going to go out and track down, track down the person who had the audacity to do a little meme about Donald Trump taking down it. So we have everything happening. We have North Korea. We have, oh, my gosh, uh, Israel. Everything in the news that's happening, a lot of things that are really serious, and so what is CNN worried about? Well, CNN is worried about who in the world would have the audacity to talk about them. Who would have the audacity to come out and say anything about CNN? Now, at first, people thought that it was uh, a 15-year-old. That was being reported. That it was a 15-year-old who was, who was saying these things about CNN. And CNN really made a mistake because they went after it. It turns out it was a middle-aged man who I guess has said, uh, you know, some things that weren't too positive about other groups of individuals. And, 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 but they overstepped it, you see, when they said something about CNN. And CNN had to go out and make a, a point about it. Had to go out and say to him, look, here's what we're going to do. You know, imagine this. It's almost like, you know, with the mafia, which you see in the, in the movies about the mafia coming to your house, right? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to allow you to uh, keep doing what you do as long as you don't do it about CNN. And the minute you do it about CNN, here's what's going to happen. Mr. Private Citizen, all of your information is going to be put out there publicly for everyone to know exactly who you are. We're going we're gonna to reveal your name, we're gonna, where you live, everything. And uh, all you have to do 
you just have to play by our rules because we're CNN. You play by our rules and nobody's going to get hurt, as they say in, in, in the uh, Godfather movie. And so they said, we need an apology from you. Uh, you can go on your merry way. Just don't come back. And he's like, okay, that's, I, I guess I can do that. I'm so sorry that I used my First Amendment free speech rights to do something against you because, you know, you CNN are the ones that are always talking about uh, your rights and how, you know, your First Amendment rights are so important and how anybody shouldn't step on those. But, okay, if you're going to tell me that I can't use my First Amendment rights, I guess you know best because you're CNN. Well, that didn't go over too well on mainstream media. Uh, you know, that didn't go over too well, I should say, on social media. Mainstream media didn't pick it up. They didn't care. CNN can do what they want all day long. The rest of them didn't join in and say, you know, add a boy CNN or add a whatever. Add a they CNN. We can't say boy or girl anymore. We have to say they. So uh, I'm surprised that they didn't do that. And I'm surprised that they didn't just say, you know, Gosh, I'm glad, I wish more of us would do that. But social media came out with hashtag CNN blackmail. And, you know, it, they, they took to Twitter saying, you know what, you didn't like this meme? Well, we're going to do a thousand more. Are you going to out us? Are you going to come and bully us, CNN? Are you going to tell us what we can and can't do while you go ahead and do whatever it is that you want to do because you're CNN and we're not? No, I don't think so. So this went on, I'm telling you, like all night long. I'm sure Twitter loved it because Twitter doesn't like to give you anything like that. They don't, they don't like to show, you know, what, what conservatives out there are thinking. I, if anything, they tried not to let anything trend that conservatives are doing. But this time, it, it was a little bit too obvious that they weren't going to be able not to allow it to trend. Because everybody was doing hashtag CNN blackmail. And if you put that hashtag in today, you'll see all the wonderful things that people said and did last night. And, and, and it was amazing. Mark Dice got into it. Uh, you know, some other Periscope pundits got into it. And just other people who had had enough of CNN, who's had enough of CNN fake news, who's had enough of CNN telling the president what he will and will not do. Uh, who's enough of CNN going into press conferences and feeling that they are God's gift to the uh, American public and they can say and do whatever they want. People have had enough. And, you know, honestly, I, I said this morning on my morning show uh, that I think it's time to contact the advertisers and anybody associated with CNN and try to tell them, okay, if you're going to advertise with CNN and, and this is what you're going to do, if this is the kind of people, the bullying that you like of the American public, a private citizen, if you're okay with that, then I won't be buying your products anymore. Uh, I don't watch CNN as it is, but I can certainly go out there and not buy any of the products that these advertisers, you know, who support CNN, I won't be buying your products. And I encourage everybody to call them and let them know what you think about the fact that CNN gets to bully people and a private citizen, and somehow it's okay. Now, Julian Assange came out last night and said, you know what? I believe that there, this is really, this is an extortion. What CNN has done here is extortion. And I feel that there's something that needs to be done. Because they're, they're basically, they, you know, if you want to look at it that way, and all the legis, uh, legalistic ways of doing it, you have to say that they're trying to say, look, if you say this, we're going to do this. I mean, when is the last time, other than the Godfather movies, did you see that? And people get away with it. And even Ted, Senator Ted Cruz from Texas today has come out and said, I think they broke a law in Georgia, and this may very well be a felony. Okay, I'm, I'm all for that. Because if they want to do that, if they want to bully people, and they want to think that they're still high and mighty, you know, because they're somehow under Obama's administration, then they need to be knocked down a couple of pegs. They need the, the full extent of the law to come after them and say, look, your First Amendment right doesn't usurp anybody else's First Amendment right. You're not going to, you know, you're not better than a private citizen out there. 
you know, it's okay for you as an organization to say, I don't like this. That would have been perfectly okay. But what not, is not okay is for you to dictate what a private citizen to do. And if they don't do it your way, then you're going to uh, reveal their personal information. I think not, CNN. I think you have really overstepped it. And I encourage all Americans out there to do what I said that, you know, I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to be using the advertiser's product. I'm not going to be using their services. CNN needs to come out and uh, publicly apologize for this. And they all kind of got on the bandwagon, a lot of them at CNN. I won't say all of them, but a lot of them at CNN. They all got on the bandwagon. They thought this was a great idea, and they moved in for the kill is what they did. They made a big mistake. And now that the person who, it, it was sad. I mean, the guy wrote an apology and everything else. I think it's been since been deleted, probably because he's lawyering up, and he probably should, especially against a big organization like CNN, again, who wants to be this, this bully against individuals who want to utilize their First Amendment rights. You, you may not like the president, CNN, but you have no right to do that against a citizen of this United States. This is not a communist country. Uh, you are not the state-run media, although you act like it, but you're not going to get away with doing that to private citizens. And I, I'll, I'll have to be honest with you. I gave, I had my turn at the, the hashtag CNN blackmail last night. I did it for a couple of hours because I wanted it to continue trending. I wanted people to see who CNN really is. You know, you've already come out in the James O'Keefe uh, uh, videos, and allegedly the James O'Keefe videos with it has you saying, hey, you know, we're just doing this for ratings. We're just doing this because... Uh, it's not for your benefit, America. It's for our benefit. You know, ethics? What are ethics? We don't care about ethics. We care about the ratings. We care about the money. I mean, it, it, it's the one time in which CNN was actually being honest about something, and they weren't being fake because they didn't know the cameras were on them. Well, the cameras are on you now. You know, what you're doing to this man is absolutely wrong and quite possibly illegal especially, you know, like Ted Cruz pointed out, in Georgia, Ted would know the law. Ted's very good at knowing the law. I know some of you would say Ted ought to be on the Supreme Court, but he knows what the law is. And, and you know, I, I, I'm really surprised that Donald Trump, that President Trump hasn't come out and said something this morning. That, that really shocked me more. Now, I know he's got other things to do. I know he's on his trip overseas, and maybe he was quite busy. And I also think that the president knows that we, we have it covered. No need to worry. We got this. <laughs> you know, we're trending this. It's going to trend all day long. Don't worry about it. Go and enjoy yourself. And, and you know, it's funny. You really, I, I don't know about you. I haven't heard a peep from CNN. Like, oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we really screwed up. Uh, let us issue our own apology because what we did was, unprofessional, uh, ridiculous, stupid, we'll never do it again, gosh, you know, can you forgive us? No, I, I haven't seen that. And I, I dare say that we're really going to see that. I, I think it's going to go on and CNN is going to act, CNN is going to act like, oh, you know, we did what we had to do. We, had, we got, we got the, uh, the vermin off the street, you know, this private citizen who thought he could, uh, he could come take down CNN. You know, and again, I, I know some of you might be saying, well, you know, but it was pretty violent. Or some of that left is saying, yes, but that meme it was inciting violence against CNN. Well, first of all, you know that that's not true. Because that, that was, there was no face on that quote-unquote person that was being taken down. There was a CNN face. There wasn't, uh, you know, Zucker's face on there, Jeff Zucker, who uh, is, owns CNN. His face wasn't on there, and neither was any other human face on there from CNN. It was a CNN logo. It had to do with your entity, your organization. So let's stop with that, shall we? So you get mad when somebody wants to take down your organization and you don't like what they have to say, so you go out, bully them, and tell them, 
hey, you would better give us an apology. You'd better never come back here again, or we're going to reveal all of this information. You want to you talk about their kids? What are their kids' ages? Where do their kids go to school? Is that next, CNN? Is that going to be the next thing that you do? I mean, you already come out against Barron Trump. You, you already have things to say about him, and I thought kids were off limits. So is that next? Will you be coming out about Barron Trump or some other child, you know, the child of uh, the children of the guy, if he has children, minor children, maybe aunts and, uh, or maybe nieces and nephews. Maybe you want to get them in case he doesn't have children of his own. W will you be doing that, CNN? Where do you draw the line? Where do you say, hey, you know, we've really crossed the boundaries here and we'd better reel it back in. Where does that happen? That's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> I don't know. You know, CNN, he here's what I want to tell you, though. For the people who really do things that incite violence, physical violence against the president, you know, like that little Broadway play, uh, where they do the assassination, or how about your friend, you know, or used to be friend, Kathy Griffin, who held up the head of Donald Trump, depicting a decapitated, bloodied head of the president. Now, why don't you go and kind of search, search for that? Maybe you know, out those people, those people that are really, really close to the line, if not beyond it, of doing something that they shouldn't be doing because. It incites violence, that it's really not First Amendment rights that we're protecting, but we're saying these people have crossed that line and that their speech does it, should not be protected. But I do want to report to you, which I think is good news for all those people that are sane and know when something should be uh, a concern and when something shouldn't be, that Kathy Griffin was visited from all do the reports that I'm seeing. She was visited by the, the Secret Service. And they had a little sit down with Kathy. It lasted a little bit more than an hour, so I'm guessing that it was a little more intense. She liked it. And, you know, one of the first things that she talks about afterwards, it's not like, oh my, again, I, I really messed up. I shouldn't have done that. I've learned my lesson. Uh, I want to move on from here. Can you please forgive me? No, it was okay, let's go attack, attack C TMZ, because, see, TMZ is, is the one that really told on her, right? TMZ is the one that came out and said, look what Kathy Griffin did. Look at what the commercial or whatever that she's, she's making here. Look at this. So they exposed her. You know, it's kind of like one of those things where a child, when they're doing inappropriate behavior, they get mad at the person who turned them in. You know, they're, they're not... Uh, they're not mad because uh, they did something wrong and, the, and they're mad at for being that stupid. No, instead, it's, it, it's mad. they're mad because they got caught, because somebody turned them in. Um, <laughs> I'm just seeing here that there's a response by CNN for what they did. And I'll get back to Kathy in a second. Um, and, and really, I, I'm looking here, and I'm not seeing an apology. <laughs> it, it, here's what I'm seeing. CNN has denied they blackmailed the Redditor, that's the, that's the middle-aged man who did the meme, and claims he is an adult and not a 15-year-old boy. In a statement to The Hill, CNN reportedly said, CNN decided not to the Reddit user for his safety. Oh, that's so nice of you, CNN. Thank you. Don't believe it, but, you know, it, you, we knew you were going to come up with something. Any assertion that the network blackmailed or coerced him is false. The user, who is an adult male, not a 15-year-old boy, apologized and deleted his account before ever speaking with our reporter. CNN never made any deal of any kind with the user. In fact, CNN included its decision to withhold the user's identity in an effort to be completely transparent that there was no deal. That was a spokesperson from CNN. So there you go. We didn't do it. Dog ate the homework. 
you know, that type of thing. It's, it's, it's the same old thing. So we can all just, you know, scoot this underneath the carpet. We'll never hear about it again. CNN has vindicated themselves because that's what they do. They can move on. Uh, they can say, no problem. We didn't do anything wrong. You know, the guy apologized. Let's let bygones be bygones. We'll move on. We'll do this again another day, and we'll come up with another excuse. But don't worry about it. We're done with it. Okay, CNN. So CNN's done. We can all, you know, we can all move on now. Aren't, aren't we glad that we got that straight? So there you go. But back to Kathy Griffin. So Kathy Griffin gets to sit down, talks with, with uh, Secret Service, and then is mad at TMZ because they, they are the people on her. They are the ones that came out and talked about basically how she was, uh, you know, inciting violence against the president by this bloodied, mocking head, decapitated head of the president. So I'm glad. You know, I, I, I wondered if we were ever really going to hear anything back from the Secret Service, if they were really going to go or if they were going to let it slide. I mean, it took them a while. It could have gone right away. Don't know what they were waiting for. Uh, but apparently they did go, and so that's good news. That's good news for all those people down the, p down the road here who think that they can come out and say things against the president and do things against the president. And it, it's not, it's not going to stop people. They're going to continue to do it. They're going to continue to push the envelope because when they were under Obama, none of this ever happened. They could say or do anything that they wanted to, and now they're not allowed to do it. Now they have to understand that we have laws in this country and that the laws are going to be put in place and they're going to be enforced. It's going to take them a while to understand that. It's been, what, six months? They need a little longer, what, what maybe four years before they actually understand that. So if, if you're thinking that it's going to stop, it's not. You know, Madonna had the Secret Service come and talk to her, and probably nothing has really changed all that much with Madonna, which she's at another little, uh, uh, you know, conference somewhere. She'll bring it up. She'll make a joke about it. And she'll talk about, oh, I better watch what I'm saying because, you know, the Gestapo or whoever is out there listening to her. But put the shoe on the other foot and it would have been, oh, my gosh, you can't say that about Obama. How dare you? I'm so glad that you were visited by the Secret Service. Is really what and the same thing with Kathy Griffin. It wouldn't have been, oh, I'm an out-of-the-box artist and I'm an out-of-the-box comedian. I'm a, you know, I haven't worked in I don't know how many years at a steady job as a comedian, but, you know. I'm just saying, it would have been would have been absolutely turned upside down if this had been done against Obama. And we all know that. And as I said, it's not going to stop people in the future from doing it, but it may slow them down a bit. And that's all the best, I guess, that we can hope for from the left. You know, in speaking of the left, I, I think there are sometimes people uh, – you know, even the Democrats get to a point where they notice this is a little embarrassing. You know, you guys really need to stop doing this, helping the Democrat Party at all. One such person, Dennis Kucinich, he's the former Democratic congressman and presidential candidate. He came out on over the weekend, or, or I guess on, no, actually on Tuesday, on the 4th of July, and he basically said, you know, you, you keep bringing this up about we need to – to look at the mental health of this president, that something wrong with him, that, you know, he's not fit for office. You know, recently they did this thing where petition for the 25th Amendment because what they want to say is this president isn't fit. He's incapacitated and can't serve as president. We need for him to get out. We need for the vice president to take over. But this man, Donald Trump, isn't fit to be president. So they, they, they've gone out and they've got 25 Democrats to sign this petition saying that he needs to be replaced. Now, Congress would need to actually replace him if it were true. Uh, I think the vice president would have to sign on. A whole lot of things would have to occur before this was even possible, but they don't care. It's not about that. It's about keeping in the political eye all the time that this president is somehow 
not a great, not a, a, a fit person. He's mentally unstable. You know, they always want to push that. He, he's you no, know, he, he needs to be impeached because he's unfit. He's crazy. He has dementia. I hear that from the left all the time. Oh, it's these stages of dementia. Oh, are you a doctor? Are you a psychotherapist? Well, no, but but I'm just saying because everybody else at CNN, WAPO, Times, uh, and everybody else on the left said it, so it must be true, right? No, no. But you just keep talking like that because tell you what you're doing. You're helping us. You're helping the conservatives. You're helping the Republicans because the Democrats are saying, you're taking down your own party. Please stop. And not saying that. But the ones that have some thinking rational minds left are saying that. Dennis Kucinich said, it's a political statement, not a medical statement that you're making. And I think it's destroying the party as an effective opposition. Well, Dennis, you know, perhaps you need to get a couple of people together and have a talk with them. Uh, I would suggest that you start with Maxine Waters. Then you might want to go and, and drop by Nancy Pelosi's office. Uh, and I'm going to find him, Chuck Schumer. Because you see all of these people, oh, and Elizabeth Warren, let's not leave her out. But all of these people, in their own way at every opportunity, are the ones who are coming out there and saying those type of things. So, and, and these are leadership. I mean, these are the people that, People are uh, on the, on the left are supposed to to look up look up to, and are supposed to follow, and are are supposed to believe, and are supposed to say, you know, if if they're saying that, then it must be true, and if they're saying it, then I really need to do it, because obviously, you know, they're they're the ones in control. I mean, they're the ones in D.C. They're the ones that see all the time, but that's not. Happening. And I think they're going to continue just to keep doing this and bringing down their own party because they don't know what else to do. You know, I mean, how many times do they have to be told Hillary lost? Hillary lost. Please move on. Think about your country. It's not about you. Try to help the president do his job. And, of course, they don't want to help the president do his job because that's the last thing that they want to have happen, that the president would actually go out there, put money in their pockets, put jobs out there for everybody, uh, you know, cause this country to do better than it's done in, in the past eight years. They don't want to see that happen. They, it would be devastating to the Democrat Party for that to happen because that would mean that they're, they're pretty much insignificant, that they're not needed, that they haven't done a great job that they haven't cared about the American public. And that's why they're not in power right now. And, and why they would, there would be no need to bring them back into power later on. Why do you need a party that's failing American people? They don't want the, the, those on the left in their own party, they don't want them to know that this president is doing a great job. That given a little, you know, leeway, to actually do as president, he could get more accomplished. And, and you know, I'll tell you what, one of the greatest examples of if you want to really ruin something, just watch what California tried to do in terms of their health care recently. You see, California got into their minds that everybody in California needed to be on a single-payer system. We needed to have the government tell us what to do in regards to our health care. We needed the government to tell us, don't worry, we got it. You don't even, you're not going to need to deal with insurance companies, those nasty, horrible insurance companies. Uh, you're not going to need to worry about uh, a co-payment or if your insurance is valid or how much insurance costs, because we in California, we're giving you a free pass. We're going to allow you to do go any, listen, if you like your doctor, keep your doctor, right? You haven't heard that before, have you? If you want to go wherever you want to go, as many times as you want to go, don't worry for about it. We're going to pay for it. 
it's all going to be paid for. The people of California will gift you the money. Now, of course, they're not going to really gift you the money. But it sounds good, right? It really sounds good. I wrote an article about it at SusanKnowles.com. I suggest that you go there and read that. I really like the article. Uh, and it goes on to talk about, you know, how brainchild, uh, Ricardo Laura and Tony Ekins from, I think, San Diego. I know she is, but I don't know if he is or not. They're the brainchild behind this, uh, I don't know, how do we, what do we say, the best way ever to take down California and to prevent it from being a uh, country, I mean, a, excuse me, did I say country? That must have been a Freudian slip. To be a state that isn't bankrupt, is, is, that, what, is that what we did it for? And, you know, the nurses' union, oh, my gosh, they came out and backed this like nobody's business. They wanted to be able to have you come in and, and see a doctor or a nurse and, and have it free. Just come in, no problem, any time of day. Now, we've got a wait list of a couple of months, but if you can hold on without dying, maybe we can see you. Because, really, if you want to know what a single-payer system looks like, Ask any veteran that has to deal with the majority of the VA hospitals. Then you'll know. You'll know how wonderful that care is. That's what your single-payer system it would be. You'd be put on a list. You would see a doctor if and when one was available. And perhaps when the doctors weren't available because they were no longer practicing in a state that, that had that kind of setup, then you would be able to see the nurses, right? The nurses in the nurses' union. Hmm. Is there is there a way for the nurses there to make money and benefit? I think so. I think so. And see, the nurses union went out and did their own analysis of how much this was going to cost because, you know, free sounds good, but free isn't free. Somebody's got to pay for free. And in this case, it would be the California taxpayers and the California businesses and, oh, did we not tell you this in California? There's one other little thing that may drive up the cost. We don't want you to worry about it, but we want to be, uh, you know, open and honest with you. We're going to allow all of the illegals, all the illegal immigrants that are in California, if you're in California, you also are going to get free health care. You can thank me later. Yes. All of the illegals in California, plus all of those that are legally in the state and paying taxes, uh, you're going to be covered under that health care, that single-payer system. Now, as I was saying, the nurses went out, and they, they had an analysis done, and they determined in their analysis that it would cost approximately $330, and that's with a B, in order to make this health care system work. And another legislative analysis was done, and that one said, no, it's going to cost around $400 billion to make that happen. And again, that's billion with a B. Now, see what happens in California, and not, not that it doesn't happen in other states, but it certainly happens in California that when you say something is going to cost like well, a measly $400 billion, it could very well end up being about double that, really. Because California kind of underestimates everything. You yeah, know, it just happens. Now, here's a real, <laughs> real clincher on this. The total budget. The total annual budget for California is $183 billion, and again, billion with a B. So you, 183, and you're talking about $400 billion in a cost to the state of California. Insanity. It's about almost three times the budget the total annual budget for all of California. Now, every you get somebody who says, uh, 
what? And, and, and they happen to be a Democrat, but they get wise and they say, huh, you know, there is no way in God's green earth that we're going to ever be able to pay for this in California. It's not going to work. It's going to be a disaster. And one of the reasons that it wasn't going to work, I mean, I don't know so much as they cared about the, the, the taxpayers of California. I mean, they've got money. Everybody here is rich. But what happened was this little thing called Medi-Cal and Medicaid, or Medicare, Medicaid, wh whatever, Medi-Cal, all of those, all of those federal funded ones. See, there's one little thing. You'd have to get the federal to allow you, the state of California, to have all those funds come into the state instead of going to Medicare, Medi-Cal, and all that. See, what happens is, you have to worry if you're on Medicare, for example, because the state of California is going to pay for you. So you don't need those federal funds anymore. It's going to be the state. And so this one state leader, last name was Rindon, decided this is never, ever, ever going to work. We, we need to stop this here before we make total fools out of ourselves. And so he said, I'm, I'm, I'm stopping it right now. I'm not going to let this go forward. We're going to take it off the table. But he didn't take it off completely. You know, he, he said, if you, you know, if you want to try to get it on the ballot, to ask the taxpayers, because, oh, you know, somebody somewhere in California has seen that a majority, you know, of the, of the taxpayers really want this sing single payer system. I don't know who these people are. It's not me, but that's what they think anyway. So they're saying, we're going to take it off the table for now. We're not going to completely take it off. You could maybe bring it back in the future. But we can't do this, people. It, it's not going to work. A and besides that, even if we wanted it to work, the chances, the chances of, chances of us getting the federal government, getting President Donald Trump to agree to allow illegal immigrants in the state of California to benefit from federal funds is kind of way over the top absurd. A president who doesn't want sanctuary cities the chances of him allowing federal funds <laughs> to go to illegal immigrants is about a million to zero. To zero. You know, it, it's not going to happen. So, California, you know, let's just back this up. Let's just stop acting stupid. Let's get this off the table. Well, you know, that's okay if you're a Democrat. You can kind of, you can kind of do those things every now and then. You come to your senses and you say, you know, we got to do something different. But that doesn't mean that somebody in your own party is is not gonna is they're not gonna like that. And and Mr. Rendon is getting death threats from his own constituents who don't like the fact that he acted reasonably and pulled this bill off the table. One person even tweeted out, I I pray that somebody knows you know, doesn't know his schedule for, you know, baseball practice or something like that, in reference to uh, Scalise, who was shot multiple times at baseball practice and it, as a Republican, and you remember. And uh, so somebody had the audacity to come out and say that. And then we have the, the head, Roseanne DeMauro, who's the head of the Nurses Association, the union, who didn't like it either, didn't appreciate Mr. Rendon, uh, came out and did this, this picture of, you know, the California flag is this, this bear, and this bear, the bear was standing up, and he had a knife in his back. Oh, my gosh, you know, the Democrats, again, here we go with the, with the violence, right? So this, this knife was in the bear's back, had Rendon's name on it, and she said something about, let's call and tell Rendon uh, what you feel about him and tell him to take the knife out of, you know, the Californian's back. 
So now, I guess, Rendon is, is kind of finding out what it's like to be a Republican when you're really not one. So being a Democrat in a Democrat state can sometimes not be a good for you. I expect that that's probably going to come back on the ballot in November, you know, when the next election in 2018 uh, for California. Because once they sink their teeth into something, they really just can't let go. Once they have this idea in their head. Because remember, they got this idea from Bernie Sanders. Bernie thought, and he, he you know, came out recently, oh my gosh, this will be so great. California will set the example. And, and he was so disappointed, of course, when California backed out. When California realized, Bernie, that even though that California is turning into a socialist state, that somebody's got to pay for it. And if you can't suck off the, the federal funds, then you're kind of not going to be too much able to to run the state into the ground. Somebody's going to say, you got to stop this. And thank God President Trump is going to be sort of like the final arbiter, right? If, even if this goes on the ballot, and that's what the taxpayers want, he's going to have to agree to allow those funds, those federal funds, to go toward illegal health care. And that may be our only savings is that I don't see him doing that. Now, if the if they Democrats get their way and they oust him under the twenty fifth amendment or, you know, some other fairy tale made up stuff that they can come up with, you know, we might be in trouble. But for now, I'm banking on the fact that California has Donald Trump in their corner, whether California likes it or not. And I can tell you, as a Republican living in this blue state, I love it. Keep it up, Donald Trump. Thank you for being the president. If it were Hillary, oh my gosh, the one-payer system would be, it wouldn't matter if it were, you know, $100 billion a thousand times over, we would still, uh, we would still let it go forward. And I've had people say, the people that when you post your article, why do I care? It's California. I don't give up, you know what, about California. Well, I always tell people the problem is they want to use California as an example about what the rest of the country can do. So if it's something that's implemented in California and can work, trust me, it will come eventually to your state, especially if you are living in a state that is blue, or in a state that is purple, then you've got to really concern yourself. And even in the red states, you've got to concern yourself because the Democrats are always trying to move into those states and trying to change you into a blue state. The best thing to do is to make sure it never happens anyway and to watch what California does to keep it out and off the table and, 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 and away from the taxpayers so they don't have to pay for it. You need to, you need to be keeping your eye on California to see what happens, to know what's coming your way. Now, some other things that happened over the holiday was uh, North Korea. North Korea is getting pretty serious. They, uh, they fired off an intercontinental ballistic missile on Tuesday, appearing to be the most successful missile test to date. And the U.S. experts think it may likely be that they launched a two-stage ICBM, meaning there was a, a second booster that was ignited and made the missile travel like 30 seconds longer. And uh, some of the United States scientists who examined the height and distance of the missile said it has the potential to have enough power to reach Alaska. Now, that's a problem. That's a problem. I mean, people want to say, you know, we, we don't want to be going to North Korea. We don't want to fight with North Korea. We don't want to fight in another war. And I get all that. And I, I agree with you. Nobody wants that. But what are you going to do when it is a direct threat to the United States and people who live in Alaska? That, my friend, is a whole and I know that the UN wanted, uh, or the United States wanted a, a, a call a meeting with the UN Security Council, a closed door meeting. I would assume that that meeting took place before the president left. 
don't know what was talked about there. You know, we don't like the UN all that much anyway. And when we go and talk to the UN, uh, my guess is we're getting pretty serious here about looking into what we can do in order to make uh, North Korea understand that we're serious. Now, we did fire back yesterday with uh, uh, maybe having a sort of just a show of force and showing them that they're going to be tolerated. And, you know, uh, South Korea has to be worried. Japan has to be worried because if it can reach us, it certainly can reach them and do far more damage. And, and they can do that right now if they want to. This guy is absolutely, this dictator is crazy. He tortures his people. He killed his own. Do you think he really cares whether or not he kills people in the United States? And I think the answer clearly there is he doesn't care. And he will do whatever he needs to do. And it's getting closer and closer to the fact that he's going to do something. And the question becomes then, what are we going to do? Are we going to send somebody in there to take him out and that's it? And finally free those people? And, and I can hear some people say, look, we don't want to get involved. We, don't, we really don't care what's going on in other countries. We, you know, it's, it's some people, but we don't want to get involved with it. And I get all that. And I, I encourage you sometime to look at the, the documentary that's out there about life in North Korea and how incredibly horrible and insane it is and what this man does to his own people and the type of life that they live is, is beyond words of anything that I've ever seen. I know that something is going to have to be done because this guy is not going to stop. This dictator has it in his head that he is, you know, the one who's going to take down America or whatever. I mean, he, when you're not rational, you're not rational. You know, you can't go and have a conversation with him and say, look, you know, we can come in and blow you to smithereens. He, it's not going to matter to him because he's going to think, hey, you know what? I'm just getting this more capability and it doesn't matter. I'm just going to unleash. And he doesn't think about the consequences. You know, that's what happens when you have a, when you've never had consequences. You don't think that there are any. And I think it's going to be at a point where he's going to learn what those consequences are. And I, I know that becoming less and less patient with him and more apt, you know, speaking out more about it and more apt to do something about it. So we shall keep our eyes on that. And again, I think if something were going to happen, we wouldn't necessarily know about it until after it happens. And if the Democrats have their way, you know, it's going to be one of those things where they're going to try to block it at every instance that they can. And especially if this president is for it, they're going to be against it. And, you know, if, if we're talking seriously about this having the capabilities of reaching Alaska, then this is something, a threat to the, to the United States, be ignored. And that the Democrats, if they do ignore it and something happens to the, in Alaska and potentially with a, with a nuclear-type uh, missile, then we've got some serious issues here that the Democrats are going to have to answer to and be held accountable for. So they, they better think twice about their responsibilities and what they're doing here. This isn't about politics. This is about protecting the citizens of the United States. You know, also there's other things happening. We're, we're not being told about it, not because anybody's necessarily trying to hide things about it, but because there's so much other things that are happening and happening in the United States. This is happening in Israel. And IDF in Israel has confirmed now that Iran is constructing underground weapons facilities in Lebanon. And they're providing Hezbollah with weapons in this way. Now, why are they doing this? Well, they're doing the factories because it's intentional to, to avoid the strikes 
from Israel. You know that every time that there's a convoy going back and forth into from Lebanon into Israel, that we that Israel usually blows them up. Because see, they know what that means. They know that those convoys are going in there to take weapons to Hezbollah. And so now they're thinking, well, we've got to do something else. We've got to go underground. That's the only way we can get those weapons over there without them being blown up. So that, that's a serious, serious issue. And as of late, because of the fighting that's kind of going on in Syria and Israel warning them, you know, don't fire back at us or, you know, we're going to come after you. Iran is kind of, uh, I don't know, I would say being in your face and sort of saying to Israel in so many words, we don't care what you think, we're going to do what we want. I understand that they've planted a flag near Golan Heights because it is their their desire, always has been, nothing's, nothing's changed, uh, along with what Syria believes is that they want to take the Golan Heights away from Israel. There is more oil there than probably any place else on the planet that we know of. Golan Heights belongs to Israel. They took it over in 97, I believe it was. Syria doesn't recognize that. Iran doesn't recognize that. They just want it. And so I would say at this point, Israel's kind of taunting uh, to, uh, I mean, Iran is taunting Israel at this point. And it's a matter of what's going to happen. I mean, if you look at Isaiah 17, Damascus is supposed to become a ruinous heap at some point. It's almost there now. And a lot of people, some pastors are now saying, you know, well, maybe it's not those people coming in after Israel that are going to make Damascus a ruinous heap, but perhaps it's Israel itself. That is going to render Damascus a ruinous heap. But in Ezekiel 9, we know that there are those that are going to come in and attack Israel, and there is a hook. That hook may very well be the Golan Heights, and those coming in to attack may be Iran, Russia, Syria, other countries as well. We are, we are very close, it seems at this point, to having... The, the prophecy in the Bible fulfilled. And it's a matter of just seeing, you know, what happens. But, you know, as things happen here in America, while they seem very ultra important to us, like the CNN blackmail hashtag, uh, I think there are really significant things going on, like North Korea, uh, like those things that are happening in Israel, that are, one, in North Korea, that could be very much... Uh, a negative impact on America and in Israel as well. I mean, it you know, as having Israel as our ally, it would be up to us to go in and help Israel. Not that they need our help, uh, but it's something that certainly that, that we might need to do and might need to be discussed and how we do it and on and on. So it's something that we need to also keep aware of and not just be so focused uh, that we don't know what's going on in the rest of the world. Again, as parts of what's going on in the rest of the world have a significant or could potentially have a significant impact on us in America. So keep your eyes on North Korea and Israel. And, and you may want to keep your eyes <laughs> on Canada, just because not that Canada would do us any harm, not saying that. But Canada um, has seen fit to go out and pay a jihadist who was born in Canada a significant amount of money. Jihadist Omar Qadar, I believe that's how he pronounces his name, who was born in Canada, when he was 15 years old, he was captured by the U.S. troops and allegedly thrown, uh, uh, was put into Guantanamo Bay. But at 15, what he did, allegedly, was throw a grenade at the U.S. troops at an Al-Qaeda uh, compound in Afghanistan, killing U.S. Army Sergeant First Class Christopher Spear. 
So at that point, he was put in Guantanamo and kept there. And he claims that Canada violated international law by not protecting its own citizen, you know, its own citizen that became a jihadist and went over there, obviously, fighting ISIS, allegedly. And there, he's saying they conspired with the U.S. Uh, in his abuse at Guantanamo Prison by putting him there. Now, he pled guilty and was taken to Guantanamo Bay where he was charged with war crimes by a military commission, but now he's being rewarded. Canada wants to reward him at, at the tune of $10.5 million to settle a $20 million wrongful imprisonment lawsuit against the Canadian government. So now, what are the chances that that 10 Point five million dollars isn't going to end up in the hands of other jihadists. Do you think that uh, he's just going to go off and live half after? Uh, see, I don't think so. I think pretty much what's going to happen is we're going to see that money dispersed among other uh, jihadists, and he will be helping to fight the cause. I'm really surprised in, in some respects that Canada did what they did. I'm very disappointed uh, in Canada that they did what they did. In our day and times of what we see going on so much anymore, is it really something that should really shock us? And I'm sure this guy is going to be laughing all the way to the bank. This is... You know, this is worth every moment that he sat in Guantanamo Bay. Every moment that he could sit there thinking about the Army Sergeant, first class Christopher Spear that he killed. Well, my question is, Canada, is what are you going to give to Army Sergeant, first class Christopher Spear's family for their loss? For what they suffered, I don't. I don't see anything coming from you uh, to the United States for for his death, his loss. But rather, you would rather give it to a jihadist. Doesn't really make sense, but I guess uh, in some way, in your mind, it takes away any any future uh, lawsuits against Canada. So no big deal. I say if you got that much money. You can give some of it to the parents of a first-class Christopher Spear. Oh, well, until next time, a lot put in there for today. Going to have a lot again the next time, I'm sure. We'll see you again next week on Knowles on the News. Until then, take care of yourself. Be kind to yourself. And we'll see you again here next week. Take care. God bless.